Jillian Brooks, James Sweet, and Amanda Dunn, Elizabeth Dunn Rem, Eugene Alex, Margo and Ron Santoni, Peter Sharfaro, Virginia Broadberg, Lawrence Dale, Patricia Adif, Elizabeth Wilkinson, Rachel Emote, Eric Clark, John D. V. Bergenham, Jay Fry, Eric Clark, Sunny Rose, Bertha Johnson, Marlene Houston, Alberto Avalo, <coughs> Makuyo in Washington, Annette DeMardo, Alina Burnham, Tiffany English, Amanda James, Kathy Goem, Henry Newhouse, Beverly Johnson, Desmond Campbell, Aaron Kogan, Martha Morales, Martha Morales, Kelly Conrad, Jennifer Colbert, Horace Lee, Karen Cohen, Maurice Fails, Evelyn Thomas, Tia Phillips, Alan Kettlestein. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. My name is Reuben Young. I'm a writing candidate for Dade County Clerk of the Course and County Clerk. I stand with the 54,000 who are echoing, echoing the demands today at this city council meeting, and I'd like to implore the city council to render justice uh, to the young people, or the young man that I m heard mentioned from what I saw in the news report, because I think that this system is broken, and I think that the good people out here in this, throughout this entire Dade County have had, have had enough, and enough is enough, and we want individuals in positions that's going to hear their voice, going to hear their concerns. Mr. Harvey Rubens, who served also as the county clerk, I never hear him say anything about nothing that goes on in this county. And this is certainly most, one of the most important issues that we now have to address. I see one of the, the persons here holding up a sign. I don't know. It's not good enough. And I support that. And there's the person who's seeking this position. I would love to do what is ever necessary to bring justice so I, the voices of the people can be heard. So I'm, I'm asking this city council to hear the concerns of the people that's now expressing themselves because they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And it's time for us to do something about it. Thank you. Renee Mowat, 1590 Northeast 125th Terrace. We are here today to deliver the names of 54,000 people who echo our demands, one of which is to fire Officer Jonathan Aleta. Our Palmer Moriah, Ellen Davis, Christine Irving, Paula Hines, Tiffany Matthews, Ellis Lanham, Madeline Fletcher, Hannah Davis, Stacy Spivy, Frederica Porter, Naomi <coughs> Mitted, Bridget Berkeley, Jade Raleigh, Janine Caldwell, Jade Dell, Alethea Oliphant, Karen Magoon, Everett Powell, Ann Cater, Philip Ost, Roger Hollander, Nadine Mott, Denise Fondanella, Michelle Griffin, <coughs> Hugh Boo, Shamira Carr, Sabrina Choi, Joe Taylor, Lynn Langley, Tendai, Dora Taylor, Howard Leps Zelter, Mary Olton, Eli Rubenstein, Ellen Datloy, Barbara Casey, Matthew Biddle, <coughs> Wesley Abilla, Allison Vogel, Marcy Hogan, Robert Phoenix, Sharita Saint, Brenda Natoli, Cedric Jor, Ayana Lee, Tina Walker, B. Booker, Shannon Farmer, Katherine Sullivan, Marvin Engel, Alicia Jones, Lola Rainey, Kimberly Davis, Rebecca Reed, Sherry Snyder, Tony Campus, Ronald Jackson, Marjani Moore, Amanda Hand, Benjamin Kraft, Roy Pyatt, Doug Morrison, Asia Banks, Laura Mazou, Jenny Hogginson, Alfred Higgins, Howard Mock, Pamela Hayes, Michael Sherber, Barbara Smith, Den thank you. Hi, how you doing? My name is Philip Johnson, 1509 Washington Street. <clears throat> I actually see a lot of optimism. I think that actually this little city can change things around and actually set an example for the entire country. In, in, um, in, this, uh, in this country, our s the police have killed 600 people already in, eight, in the past eight months. That's absurd. That, those are wartime statistics. And I don't think anyone wants to live in a country like that. 
And I think that we can actually set a great example and change things around. In Norway, it takes police three years to become a police officer. That's how many people they killed in the past 10 years, zero. We need to indict this officer, have better trainings for the police department, and settle this lawsuit. And I think, I think we have to show the world that it's not okay for police to deal with situations like this. And it's absurd that 54,000 people have to let us know that, but that's just how it works. Sheila Malone from Farmingdale, Adrian Clemens, Detroit, Ann Vane, Dame, Chicago, Georgia Khan, Nevada, James Dixon, Tara, Brian Hunter, Alexandria, Cat Frank, Richmond, Morris Lucas, Bronx, William Bronwell, Mount Holly Springs, Beth Powers, Greenfield, Brent Loon, Pasadena, Carol Schaffer, Chorus, Kevin Haberl Long, um, <coughs> James Byer, Missoula, William Jenkins, John Wolf, Sarah Kettner, Sarah Launder, David Schilling, John Schneider, Megan Berg, John Edwards, Pamela Sundin, Courtney Jackson, John Schneider, Robinson, E. Robinson, Audrey Lima, Lorenza Robinson, Robert Batio, Gary, Gary Goats, Donna Leslie, Marissa Mayo, Amanda, Good evening, Celia Mayola, 100 Norris, 124 Street. Um, <clears throat> I feel a little upset, and I agree with all these people who talk before me. I waiting to say about our city, to talk about our city, to talk about environment, and to talk about pesticide. A little word, simple word, that mean a lot. Because not only guns kills, pesticide kill too. Then Ileana mentioned this word when we talk about the landscaping, the company is working today and they will ha the city will hire and she was for an answer about pesticide. <coughs> and she was ignored. Another thing that made me accept too is a green land, a beautiful land that Mr. Galvin mentioned. He has ignored too. Uh, when a land is des designed for something, it's because is they won't change in the, foot, in the future. It's this land will be a park in the future. Nobody changed this land to be a, a, a street, more cement. And I, I think they should think about this and talk again about this because this land belongs to us, to North Miami, and we want a park. Thank you. Good evening, William Prevotel, 11950 North Bay Shore Drive. Um, normally I would have liked to have shared my uh, vacation experience where we took our 15 year old daughter, now going on 16, across the country to uh, 30 plus locations across <coughs> the city, many urban areas and such. And uh, along with the national parks and the state capitals and the great sites that we went to, um, we tried to uh, embrace the, or the uh, political, social component. And we went to places like Andersonville, the famous Confederate prison where so many uh, Union soldiers died uh, unnecessarily, where uh, Dealey Plaza where President Kennedy got shot, and the Lorraine Hotel where Martin Luther King got shot, and Oklahoma City to where the federal building was bombed. And along the way we went to Ferguson outside of St. Louis and couldn't help but be struck that how much, and this is before events happened here, how similar Ferguson was to North Miami. It wasn't the hellhole that they made out to be on the press. It was a rather, rather civilized place with some uncivilized action, possibly, some errors that took place. Not that the people or the community was in any way uncivilized. <coughs> Tonight, 
you know, I might be going off on the fact that we let an opportunity for a park go by, or the fact that we, you know, allow for lobbyists to uh, be 51%. You could have a, a billionaire at 50%, another billionaire at 50% forming a partnership, and they don't have to declare it. I don't think that's good for our citizens or our community. And what I'm asking for you tonight, I'm not going to take the focus on that, but on the events of recent, uh, recent weeks, that this that this be something that the city truly takes seriously with compassion, earnestly, and without, without fault. This is something that's going to live with the communities that I mentioned for years to come. And I hope that we Thank rise to the much, occasion. Thank you very much, Mr. Pepper. Like we we stop everybody police. at two minutes. It goes for you as well. Thank you. Good evening. And to address the uh, councils, the mayors, and distinguished people that are sitting here, I was not going to say anything, but as I said and I listened, my name is Sybil. Name and name. address. No. Your name and address. I'm giving it now. Okay. Sybil, S-Y-B-E-L-W-L-E-E. -E -E. I live at 602 Northwest 100th Street, Miami, Florida. I was just in the area uh, shopping, and I was told there was a meeting going on, and I'm a community activist and advocate. So I decided I would step in and see what issues are over here. However, the issues are everywhere the same. And I don't know the answer, but I do know our hearts has to change. When I looked over there and saw the sign, I don't know, it's not good enough. It brought tears in my heart because in 2003, I lost my first grandchild to a mistaken identity drive-by shoot in a car right here on 125th Street, North of 6th Avenue. She was only 19. She didn't have, she wasn't a problem child. <coughs> she was in school and working a job to become a midwife. She didn't even get a chance to cash her first work check before they called and told me my granddaughter was dead. And we taught values. <coughs> we listened to the law. But the law seemed to only work on the opposite side and not for the people who actually pay the taxes, pay your salaries, keep the communities clean. And we all know about the ghetto. And if everybody was doing their jobs, the poverty grants that comes into each city across this country, and I would outline the 13 colonies, because that's where all this foolishness got started, and the money was put where it was supposed to be earmarked to, we wouldn't have all these you know, problems. The I don't know is still ringing with me, and that's what caused me to get up here to say because my heart is palpitating because I never knew what was going to happen to my. We don't have closure yet, and this is over 13 years ago. Now her mother died with cancer, so she never had closure. And I thank you for your time, but you, something's got to done, be done. Thank you. Public hearing is still, uh, Citizens Forum is still open, but I see no one coming to the mic. So Citizen Forum is not closed. If we get to uh, the part of council reports, I see my name is listed first. Uh, I wasn't uh, going to spe speak tonight about any uh, thing, but uh, I mean, the issue is there as a, I would be remiss, uh, you know, by profession as a medical doctor to not say a few words in response to what, uh, to all the, the grievances that have been expressed uh, before us. I want everybody to know that we, as a council, uh, we are humans. And we are made of flesh and bones and blood. So if you pinch us, we will feel the pain. If you stab us, we will bleed just like everybody else, and we do have a conscience. And as a medical doctor, I, I was trained to preserve life and to do no harm. That's the oath I, that, that I took. And uh, wherever there is problem, they, that's where uh, I go. Had I not been uh, elected uh, uh, mayor and dealing with this situation, I probably would be in your position, sitting where you're sitting now. So. Uh, saying the, all that we are policy makers, uh, that, that, that's what we are. We, you know, as mayor and council members, uh, we are here to see to it that the business of the city 
uh, is well taken care of, that the needs of the citizens in the city are met. Uh, that's why we earlier we actually praised the budget department for winning the award you know, that you know that from the budget association. And uh, yeah, we are policy makers and when incidents like this happen, everybody is entitled to due process, including the, the, the two uh, gentlemen uh, who were involved as well as the police officers. And, and the FDLE is involved, as you all know it, it's public record. Uh, the matter was turned to FDLE 24 hours after the incident. Uh, that's, uh, and they were invited by our chief of police just in a way of transparency to let people know that we are not going to hide uh, anything uh, in, in, in this matter. But unfortunately, investigation does not move at the speed of social media. Uh, if something happens today, and in one second, you can spread it all over the world. But uh, because of the due process, you know, Florida Statute 112 entitles every police officer who is involved in any uh, e e e event such, such as this, and there are a lot that you know that is at stake. You know, we have a police union, and and the do we have to let the due process take its course, and we have to let the investigation take its course, and we in our, we remain convinced that it will lead us to uh, to the uh, to uh, uh, to the evidence at hand, to the truth, and wherever it leads us, that's where we will go. And a body camera, and uh, we've already. Uh, initiated uh, the process to acquire body cameras for all our officers and they will come in due time and I believe that we are reviewing in different uh, technologies uh, with different companies and uh, that uh, that will come and uh, maybe in a few months uh, to, to come you will see our police officers being uh, wearing uh, a body cameras and only one of them specifically that I'm going to answer to to the gentleman who mentioned well, since he pointed he mentioned my name that I got up you know while every while he, someone someone wa was talking and I this is first I met met right I respect everybody's right to speak but just like I respect yours I expect you to respect mine no matter what I'm doing, I don't care if I was talking to President Obama, to the Pope, to the King of Saudi Arabia, if I have a physiological need, I will get up and I will go and satisfy my physiologic need. I may look like a superman, but I am not. <laughs> I am not a, a superman. And as far as the request for public rec you know, re records, the letters and the calls, we've had different meetings, staff meetings, and we have agreed that if a letter comes, it will either our department in the police and uh, not police, the uh, mayor and council, if it goes to the city manager, to the city attorney's office, to the clerk's office, all of these correspondence will be channeled to a central location and you're only going to get one response. If you send, you're only gonna get one response from that central location and that is what I think that we agreed on in, in our meetings. And again, the, the matter is under investigation and justice will be rendered, uh, will be served in due time. That's my report. All right, Who, who's, who's next? You, you can go now. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, well, first and foremost, I didn't know of the process of the letter going through a channel because I do have a, a, a issue with that. If it's addressed to me, I would like for me to receive it. So I would apologize to the young lady whoever sent something to me. Um, I could assure you, if you sent an email, and I could attest, especially to Councilman Gavin, within 10 minutes you'll get it back. W for me, at least 20 to 48 hours. So I don't know w where the cor correspondent went or who you sent it to. However, um, I have made requests to meet with your organization four weeks ago. I wanted to meet and just to hear your concern, I have not heard anything. So it does go both ways. Not saying that you particularly or anybody in high hand did get the letter, ju just some, yes, yes. Um, well, th this is the organization. I saw a t-shirt, the circle of the, of the brotherhood, um, which been leading, I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, but anybody is open to meet with, um, with my office. You could call me, you could email. 
I'm just saying it. I think the, the mayor put it very frankly, we are human beings. I'm a special education um, teacher, um, ma'am. I think you were mentioning we are very, very, um, I went to school for that and I teach special education courses at St. Thomas University. So we are very well, we are very well aware and sensitive to every, everybody needs and we are very respectful. And at every council meeting, if, if you guys come regularly, the mayor or one of us always say, please be mindful. It has nothing to do with any particular group. That's just, if you come here regularly, you'll know. That's what we do when public, um, when public hearing is, um, is starting. But in, anyhow, I like to say, if, you, if anybody from the group would like to meet, uh, we are open. You could go on the website, get our email, email us, and we'll be more than happy to, to meet with you. But w certain things we can't do because this is an ongoing investigation. We'll have to go through it through our uh, um, legal department. But rest assured, if you do want to meet with us, we are transparent, and we do understand um, the sensitive the sensitivity of the matter within the community. And we are here, we are listening. However, we cannot act um, as, I guess, you know, um, as swiftly as, as um, the community want. And there's really nothing we, we can say, but we are respecting everybody's right um, to a due process. And, and just like the officer, you guys have your right to speak. They have a, a right to speak as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a different organization oh, well, who speaks I, I don't know whoever's yeah, the organization, yeah, whoever. Yeah. Oh, SCIU and well, whichever the union, they are very much okay. aware of how to get in touch with, with, uh, with our office. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Manager, I think I'm next. What are the dates for budget workshop and budget hearing? Uh, the budget, the two budget meetings are uh, officially scheduled for September the 6th and September the 20th. We'll be getting uh, your book. 6th and 20th? 6th and 20th. For the we'll hearing? For the, for the budget hearing. hearing? For the two hearings. When you gonna have the workshop? We already had we already <coughs> had one workshop, so we'll we'll be when? we had a workshop. Uh, what was it? About the budget, the upcoming budget. Yeah. <laughs> Where? Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not a workshop. We had a presentation doing regular yeah. meeting. You did? No, yeah. we had a budget workshop. Oh, I wasn't Can part of it. The presentation. That's, that's we that's went through uh we went through several. Uh, the high level budget and all that stuff. But yes. Okay, you're not gonna have it. You're workshop. not gonna have another yes, one we'll for public no participation. No. We we will be providing you with the the detailed budget books uh, by Thursday, uh -huh. um, and then we'll go through our normal process. the The budget hearings are the um, general public comment time, and you know they're um, by. But usually you by statute do the workshop before. Right? have the public input in the budget. We, we, we had a I remember before we asking had, that meeting. Before we have our first hearing. We, we had um, the workshop. We did because it was a little <laughs> bit too early. We were um, <coughs> asking why is it so early. Yeah. You said by Thursday we're going to have a book. The, the detailed books will be uh, published, yes, to, okay. to the council. So, and we'll start our brief this week. Okay. That's it? Yes, sir. Ms. Councilwoman? Um, I would like to thank all of you who came here this evening with your time to speak to us. We did listen to you and we understand. Um, I personally have not gone out and made comments. Um, I have been in constant contact with our manager and attorney with their legal advice. I believe they're handling this matter very professionally. It has been turned over to the FDLE and it's under investigation. So to be able to make any further comments without the answers just makes no sense to me and under my you know, advice of my counsel, I'm, le I'm letting them handle it. I think they're doing a very professional job. We will get to the bottom. We will get the answers. Uh, we are a few weeks away from that. So um, thank you for being here. We do listen. And I'm also very, very aware and very interested to make sure that we do have the proper training to deal with um, those people who are not, um, I, don't, I don't know the politically correct word, um, but they don't, sure. pardon me? Disabled. 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 Mentally disabled. <coughs> um, it, it's, it's tragic, and it, it's tragic, and we will do everything I know in our power to make sure that we have the proper training. So if an incident like this happens, we will be better able to deal with it. Um, that being said, um, I would like to invite everybody, remind everybody, this Friday night is Jazz at Mocha. 
and please come out and support our local stores and restaurants. Uh, the North Miami Art District will be participating in Nomad Art, War, Art Walk from 6 to 9 to come out, have some food, listen to jazz, and go through our shops. It's, real, it's really a nice event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To the speakers who were here earlier, uh, especially Sister Berlinda, thank you for being here. I really appreciate the passion with which you all spoke and Sister Berlinda, the links that you went to be here this, this evening. Thank you for your uh, diligence in all of this. Um, on a, a separate note, for our, par our parks department, I want to say a big thank you. Um, we served, uh, we showed a wonderful movie last week called uh, Olympic Pride, American Prejudice. Mayor uh, Joseph had a chance to stop in. It was the story of the other African American Olympic athletes on that 1936 Olympic team that most of us probably had never heard of. I know I hadn't. Uh, yeah, we all know Jesse Owens and knew that he won four gold medals in Berlin in 1936, but what about the other 17 African American athletes? Uh, the filmmaker Deborah Riley Draper was there. Uh, we had good crowds of kids. <coughs> Thank you to the Parks Department for having the idea of bringing the kids in for an afternoon showing. Um, I thank everybody who was involved in all the logistics and getting it set up. I think everybody who saw the movie really, really appreciated the opportunity. So to Mr. Corker and the park staff, thank you for putting in a long day uh, last Thursday. And then the last thing I want to close with is to uh, let everybody know that the Luna Star Cafe right across the street from City Hall here celebrates its 20th anniversary mm -hmm. this weekend, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Alexis, a female-run business. Alexis has been running the <coughs> Luna Star Cafe right across the street here for two solid decades. I could rattle off all the other businesses like Starbucks that came and went, and she's still there. So if you have a chance to go by the Luna Star Cafe this Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, please do so. They have open mic, they have different music, they have lots of great beer specials. Not that that's why I go. Um, but you really, really will appreciate going by the Luna Star Cafe this weekend. This Friday is actually her 20th anniversary of being open. So congratulations wow. to the Luna Star Happy Cafe. And Mr. Mayor, that's all I've got. All right, thank you. That's it? Oh, yeah, no, we, I, I don't know why I always forget staff. Natasha is city, city manager, you want to go first? Yeah, I have one thing I know of is of particular interest. Um, we were able to be in contact with uh, uh, Ramon um, over the uh, lead auditor from the state who's been conducting the uh, requested audit for the last, I think it's been over a year now. Um, we received email notification today that they are in the final review stage and they're off in the, I guess their boss is in Tallahassee. So we will have the audit finally completed and published within the next week or so. So I just want to report that I know that's been of particular interest um, to the council. So that, that'd be it. Mr. Attorney? Uh, yes, uh, Mayor. Um, first of all, I apologize for being late. I just flew in from Cleveland. Um, hey boy, are your arms tired. <laughs> boy, are my arms tired. Um, but I, I just came in. I, I had a uh, prior engagement before I became the city attorney. I had to go do some training up. Uh, I was speaking at a conference in, in uh, Cleveland. Um, so I apologize for being late. What I did want to mention is on August 11th, uh, we did hold, well, I, I held um, public records training for all of the uh, staff members, uh, the directors. Um, that stemmed out of, actually, we had already planned that. Um, based on conversations the manager and I had had, and for some of the discussions that we've had, and I've, I know Councilman Galvin in particular, before I became city attorney, I sat in the audience and, her, and heard the discussions about public records. Um, so, so everyone understands the policy um, decision or the direction that we're going is, and the, the direction I gave the staff is, you get a public records request, you respond to the public records request. We will document that it's been responded to afterwards but get the responses out. Um, this was the policy that, w that we, we implemented. It, it, it kind of coincided, we were doing this anyway, but it kind of coincided with the incident, the, the shooting incident, um, and we've been able to exercise that. 
I think there has been a couple of uh, instances. I know uh, I saw an email today that there was something that we that didn't get out. But I think you will see, and I think the community will see that it, it, we will be getting the better with the public records request. You will get your public record request timely, um, um, and 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 quickly, and uh, hopefully everyone recognizes that and, and and sees that in the future. And that's all I have. Thank you, Madam Deputy Clerk. Just a reminder that we're in the middle of primary elections and our uh, public library is open to the public. Uh, our extended hours until 7 p.m. on Friday and until 4 p.m. over the weekend. So remember to vote. That's it for me. Thank you. And Vice Mayor just reminded me to acknowledge the uh, wonderful work that has been done by the CPND department. Where's CPND? Stand up. CBND put out a nice brochure. It's called South Florida Center for Opportunity, not City of North Miami. It has a great, a lot of great things about what North Miami is pretty much all about and what we have to come in the innovative programs we are putting together in terms of economic development, a, our relationship with Johnson & Wales University and FIU. And uh, so please, are they, are they available downstairs in the lobby? No? They will be. They will be, okay. So they grab a copy be. and it's good information. That's God's copy. No. <laughs> now we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you very much.